Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me here once again in Transport Fever 2 overlooking one of our earliest industries that we built into our train network here which is the Fukushima Quarry and well I'm, I create a bit of an issue for myself to be honest. Uh, we've got a very busy sort of mini freight hub here which is serving the main cargo bulk line which now has three trains on it yet we added a third train onto this route uh, in the last episode which is sending down uh, food and construction materials down to our main uh, industry hub our main cargo hub at a Jaxima the epic MMX but I, I put in this rather small single line route from the quarry oops don't keep spinning it around man from the quarry into the combat plant here which serves both um, the the main uh, hub and also the local needs of Fukushima itself. Actually, how are we doing? Are we satisfying those needs at all? 80%? That's doing quite well. Okay, um, we've got, I think, reasonably modern trucks on there. I don't think they can get any more modern. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just, just, just waffling a little bit because it's just a little thing that I'm not sure if I've shown you already. Uh, on this line here, because I I don't particularly want to put a much bigger and more expensive train on there. I mean, how much money are you making? Half a million? That's quite nice. Um, but it is a bit slow, it's a bit small, and it's not quite keeping up with the output of this quarry. So as you can see here, it's overflowing the terminal storage by quite a lot. Yeah. And what I thought I could do here was add in some extra capacity on the on the ter on the station itself. And one way of doing that is by adding one of these extra station buildings, these cargo sheds. Now, for the life of me, I cannot remember which mob they they come from. If I if I remember to do this, I might add an annotation to the video just to highlight it for you. But all the mods I'm using are of course in my Steam collection uh, which is linked down below so if you want to check them out and, uh, and see if they work for you in your game then by all means just go along and check them but these are quite nice they just add some old-fashioned not particularly Asian or tropical buildings to your stations but they do add capacity and a little extra flavor to it as well so we've got open sh an open shed there if I put it over here you can see it but not hidden by the smoke and you've got these little sort of uh, Covered sheds, a, a double story warehouse kind of place, a little main building, all within that nice little style. Anyway, what I thought I could do here. Oh, you're, you're quite big. You're a large. Oh, you are. Um, don't really want you on a quarry, though. That's a bit over the top. But I was thinking this one might work here. Yep, that fits in quite nicely. 18 grand or so. And you add. Another 20, I think that was to the capacity, which probably isn't enough, but, you know, it looks good. So I'm happy with that. So that's a nice little mod. Anyway, as you can see here, I'm just going to pause this for a second because we have got, astonishingly, over 5 million in my bank account. And I have taken my loan down already. Uh, we've moved on about, ooh, perhaps 7 or 8 months since the end of last episode. And we've made a fair chunk of money. I've spent some, and we'll, we'll, I'll mention that in a minute. Um, but we are making so much money now, uh, so I can actually repay pretty much all of that loan. So I've got a lot more I can take out again if I need it, which I probably will. Anyway, before we get into today's tasks, what have I done? Oh, I've increased the capacity of the grain train here, uh, feeding the... Where's the food factory? The food factory is over there. It's doing quite nicely. And we've got... Is that you? You're the... Yes, you are. There you go. So there's this train here, which I've added some new wagons to. If we go into Manage Vehicle, I edit you, uh, go to the cargo section here. We were, until just before I started this recording, using the WA1 wagons. The WA ones, these are here. So nine capacity, 40 miles an hour, which matches the train we've got, that's fine. But I discovered we do have some new ones recently added. Which I think was it the Wafu? No, it wasn't you. Ah, it was a Whammo. Yeah, the Whammo 3500. So I've added some of those. I've replaced the little 9 capacity ones with these 13 capacity ones to, to boost that up. Because now I've got three trains coming in from the main freight hub near Ajaxima. It's bringing a lot more grain into this connecting station here 
be carried off to the food factory to bring back food to feed all my lovely, 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 lovely people here in Ajaxima and Manila. Are we actually supplying much? Yeah, Manila's not really growing so much. Yeah, I, I might deal with that. But I've, <laughs> I'm kind of forgetting Manila. It gets serviced a bit. In fact, is that train? Is that the train we're talking about here? It's a very small capacity. Are you actually leaving anything behind at the hub? Uh, no, oh, the hub is pretty much empty. Wow, that's impressive. So, yeah, we're not getting much food sent off to Manila because quite a lot of it is going into a Jacksima, which obviously is a lot bigger and has a much more substantial demand for food. Uh, where else has food demand? Is it Jakarta? It is Jakarta down here. Are you getting much food these days? Again, a very modest demand, but you are getting some. So, yeah, so I needed to, to get all that food coming down here uh, to feed these cities uh, from our main freight hub. So that's that's working quite nicely there. Uh, the other little thing I've done is after adding Chengdu to our passenger network um, I, and a little bus network, obviously, inside the town. Uh, ooh, well, you see, we're getting quite a few quite a few bus passengers waiting at the stops. But again, like most towns, you see bus passengers waiting at one or two stops and all the other stops have one or two or none as in this case uh, passengers waiting so it's that the bus routes appear to be a little lopsided but oh, you are still losing money uh, actually mm, it's not that bad you've only been running for less than a year but I have added another bus to this route just to try and pick up some of that demand uh, is there a bus coming oh there's one there You've got four on. You Should we watch that bus, actually? Let's get the game rolling on a little bit and watch this little bus come up to this very busy station. But it's, it's not a station, it's a bus stop, but you know what I mean. Ooh, people taking in the scenery on the top deck. Yeah, nobody got off, so we only picked up yeah, four passengers. Perhaps we need another bus on there, I don't know. But I'm going to leave it for the time being. Uh, generally talking, we're going to start working in a moment. I just wanted to say one other thing about profitability. All my lines. Uh, oh, <laughs> no. Oh, why does the game do this? In the moments before you joined me, before I started introducing you to the game, I had everything in profit apart from three routes at the bottom here. And as soon as I say to you and open this up and try and show off to you how well we're doing, the game says, nah, you're not really. You've got all these lines losing money. But they're not losing huge amounts, are they? Um, in fact, our, our latest route, a Jacksima to, she to Chengdu. Oh, that suddenly started making money. That was losing money uh, earlier, before I started recording. Um, but... And in fact, we've just got the two bus routes, the two latest bus routes in Chengdu and Surat. These are the two towns we've just added to our passenger network. Where's Surat? I'm going in the wrong direction. There it is. So only those two bus routes are losing money. All the other local buses are profitable. So what is the plan today, Stan? We're in uh, the end of 1918, November. And I mentioned, well, we saw at the end of the last episode... We have got a very nice potential industry chain going on here. We've got crude oil from the well. We've got an oil refinery here. We've got a plastics manufacturer here. We have got a goods factory here, which uses that plastic. We have got mines over here, both iron ore and coal and a steel foundry. We could make goods and Chengdu wants goods. Who else wants goods? Anybody? Anybody? Um, okay, Chengdu wants <laughs> good. I'm sure there'll be other places, actually. If I go into the industry, it will tell me, won't it? Consumers. Hong Kong, which is on one of our distant islands. Yerevan, Fukushima. Oh, so that would go back through the hub. That would be good, wouldn't it? Izmir, which is over here. Uh, Nowhere, which is up here. And Chengdu, or Izmir, yeah, we've looked at Izmir, and Chengdu, of course, which is the nearest one. So that obviously comes at the bottom of the list. Bizarre. So we could do that, but what I thought I'd like to do, actually, I want to 
do a passenger route again for this episode and we're looking at going to Kiev. So we're going to take a route. I think we'll come round this side of the lake, round here and come in this side into our hub. So we've got oh, loads of money. I've got five million again in the bank. Uh, so that should be able to, we should be able to afford oh, a good couple of good trains for that. So what I'm going to do now, as usual, is I'm going to stop talking in a moment, hand over to a soundtrack and the speed build. And we're going to look at putting a passenger service into Kiev here. Okay, so it's going to come down here, so it might impact on this uh, dense residential area here because our trains aren't terribly, aren't terribly clean and efficient at the moment. They are a bit sort of polluting. They have an emissions issue, so it might affect that. But that's quite good, I think. We come in there. We, we could stop here, actually. But no, I think we'll come into the centre of town. Actually, looking at that... Um, now, logically, of course, what I would do if I do it, oh, with 1919, we've got a new wagon, the Tofu 250, which I'm sure means something to somebody. Uh, yep. Yeah. And again, thank you to all the great uh, modders creating these Asian uh, vehicles and objects and assets, uh, both Japanese and Chinese. I've got a few Russians in here as well, as you've seen. So there's a nice mix of of Far Eastern Europe out all the way out through to the far east of China and Japan. So thank you very much to all those modders creating these assets that I can use in this tropical themed game. Uh, so yes, if I was playing an ordinary game, I would obviously link Kiev to Chengdu and have a nice circular route there. But that's not how this map works. Everything goes into the hub and very few towns connect to each other directly. They all have to go through the hub to get around because that's that was my plan. So yes, I'm going to shut up now. We're going to get a train station built. We're going to put some trains on it and we're going to start serving passengers into Kiev. So I'll see you again in a few minutes time.
Okay, so here we are. We have got the line now configured. As you saw, I did uh, a minor uh, readjustment of a Jaxima Maxima uh, passenger hub here in uh, Hub City. Uh, so the Jakarta route goes into a different platform now. But I mean, obviously that makes sense because the Kiev route is coming in from further north. Yes, I have got the map in the correct orientation at the moment, which makes quite a change, I think, doesn't it? Really? Uh, so yeah, that's coming in there. But the thing is, what... Uh, vehicles I want to use on here. We've got a, uh, our latest train is the Class S from Russia which goes at 71 miles an hour which is I think that is actually our fastest train. Costs half a million a year to run. Now if Kiev was a nice big city which it isn't yet then that would definitely be worth it. So the 89 goes 56, which is a nice enough speed. It's reasonably potent, 736 kilowatts of power. Although the, the Chinese one is that much more powerful. Oh, actually, you're quite powerful, but you only go 43. Do you know what? Let's put one of these Class S's on it. Yeah, we'll put a Class S, 71 miles an hour. We shall get lots of people coming along to take the ride. And our passenger wagons... We don't have any that go quite that fast yet. Uh, okay, you're a suburban something or other. Um, I've no idea where that comes from. It's probably a mod. Uh, these red ones certainly are mods. They go 62. We've used quite a few of these already. And oh, you're, you're a different gauge. Yeah, I don't know what difference that makes, to be honest. <laughs> I'll just... Because, yeah, some of the Japanese, or I think it's particularly the Japanese uh, mods, do have different gauges and so on. They've got a whole subset of an infrastructure going on. A bit like some of the UK mods, I think, have narrow gauge. I may be mistaken on that. So you got you carry 24 at 62. Uh, you're all different. Okay, you're a third class car. Which one are you? You're that one. Are you a... You're a third class. I'd quite like. You're an observation car. Oh, you only carry 10. No, 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 no. The, the trouble is here, there's too many choices. And I, I hate having too many choices because I then spend, as you can see here, hours, days, months, not making my mind up about anything. So, okay, we'll stick with the 8400. Uh, 18400. Yeah, whatever, that big number. Uh, so we'll go for a high capacity brake van. Okay, we'll stick uh, one of you on, and one of you on, and a brake van at the end. Yeah, like so. Okay, that's going to cost me more than I have at the moment, but that's fine. That gives me 72 capacity, travelling at 62. Okay, so I need a bit more money. In the bank account, there we go. Oh, I haven't bought any road vehicles yet either, have I? So I'll take another half a million out as well. So I can buy those uh, buses for Kiev. Right, so we'll buy you. And can I put you on the Jakarta, the Ajaxima to Kiev line? I can. That is splendid. So we'll, I'll follow him out the station in a minute, but let's get some buses down here. We're going to need a... A depot. This is our industrial area, isn't it? Along well, your commercial. Where's the, oh, the industrials all the way over there? That's okay. Um, yeah, we'll put a depot down there, I suppose. Our depots. Okay, we'll use a standard one here and we'll just slip you in here, perhaps. You should be nice and cheap ish. Rotate you so you more or less line up. More than that, that's good. 13. Can you not be a bit cheaper than that? Oh, apparently not. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put you there. Yeah, one of the little tricks, um, I think it was another Transport Fever 2 content creator, Andrew Plays, I think that's his name. If I've got that wrong, um, I'll correct it in an annotation to this video here. Uh, but yes, he demonstrated a little issue with depots and bus stations and other road stations generally. So if you connect them directly to the road, there's a real risk you'll get traffic lights put up when traffic lights become a thing. 
and because you're connecting the station or the depot road directly to the main road you can't get rid of the, the traffic lights they're there forever but if you have the if you put the station or the depot just set back a bit from the road and then connect it with ordinary road again then if you don't want the traffic lights there you can delete them so that's a nice little thing to know and this might be a bit cheaper i don't know so we'll put you there we'll put a little bit of street in there no it's no more it's no cheaper really yeah so if any traffic lights do pop up here because of the way the town develops because i've not connected them directly to the depot i will be able to remove them which is jolly nice i'll leave you there we're going to need some buses for this route uh, here we go we'll use the gaganal it's about time we had a new bus actually and uh, we'll put three oh let's put four on oh you're only you're less than half a million gosh okay and you can all go on the Kiev route there you go so let's follow our train out of the station looking beautiful now he's actually crossing over i probably do need to rationalize my depots for the passenger services as well just like i did uh, up here for the cargo the freight routes i've just got these committed these dedicated depots there i might put the passenger depots in a more sensible place as well because they've got to cross several routes to get down to that so it's a bit complicated but he's getting there anyway so we'll just uh, have a look at you again yeah, looking good going slowly as you cross over all the tracks Actually, I've got some money in the bank, so I suppose I should be able to smooth you down. Oops, there you go. I'll just smooth it out a bit, make that looking a lot, whole lot nicer. And I'm so happy that they all went under the bridge. <laughs> it's amazing how wide a span you can get away with. Okay, let's pay some of this money back. So I'm not paying any unnecessary interest the jakarta train carry oh it's oh that's the dmbn foo line yes you are always very busy and you're not that profitable actually hmm. how many people have we got waiting here for dmbn foo 77 not a huge number what about uh, dmbn itself wherever it is you're up there you are yeah, it's not a bad number. However, I was noticing actually, uh, when I was looking at this prior to starting the recording, the Fukushima line is very popular here, and we have actually got fairly small trains, old trains on there. They are. How old are you? Come on, you can tell me. I'm, I'm not seeing it, am I? 15 years. You are quite old. So I think these trains could do with a little bit of an upgrade. So, yeah, including the Chuffer Puffer Express, uh, so named by Steve M4. Thank you, Steve, for that name suggestion. A splendid name it is, too. Um, and a reminder, if you feel like naming a train or a industry or a station or anything in the game, really, then please just do give, send me a note in the comments box below. And I'll be more than happy to accommodate you. So, yeah, 90, 195 there. These trains do need to be bigger. And um, Fukushima, it's not that long a route but yeah, it's about as long as that is a bit kinky isn't it to Kiev yeah, it's a trouble with drawing it in two directions and hoping they match up never mind never mind I, I, it makes the route more interesting anyway these trains here so what can we replace them with you are currently if I bring you up to screen so I can see you the chuffer puffer there you go you're a PV. You are still quite a slow-ish train, aren't you? 40 miles an hour. We can do better than that. 47? Actually, how powerful? You 300. Oh, could we use a chi chi Oh, you do cost a lot because you're so powerful. <laughs> so nearly 700,000 a year. That is, uh, is a, a lot of money. I do quite like these 8900s. 56 you listen because you're not that powerful you're 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 okay actually you're you're powerful 
but you don't go that fast. There are two trains on there. Would they work? So these trains go maximum 37. So that's a little bit faster to Fukushima. No, let's start going fast. I think we need faster trains. So we're going to stick uh, a knuckle couple on there. The 462. And wagon wise. You can go 56, so we don't want one of these really fast wagons. Ah, uh, yeah, and you're the next best thing, the 50. Okay. Hmm. How are you? Okay. You don't look very pretty, that's the trouble. I'm running out of money, so let's quickly boost that by a bit. There you go, that should be enough. So we'll manage both these vehicles and replace them. Yeah, the capacity is there's not that much more capacity and you're already a mediocre performance. Uh, that's the condition. Where's the performance? Mediocre, there you are. 37 in four minutes. 50. Oh, actually, you're not that bad. That might work better. It's only 70 capacity. They're not very big these carriages are they that's a trouble so it's a, again it's a mix of a Japanese locomotive I believe it is Japanese and uh, presumably uh, Russian or Soviet uh, passenger wagons okay 10 million for those two trains that's good uh, so where's the chuffer puffer where are you going you're going to a Jaxima also I want to keep an eye on my train to Kiev wherever that is oh you're almost there Do we have any passengers for you? Six already. And look at that, you see. The, these bus stops. 38 people. Um, okay, I'm going to put another bus on there then. They'll probably start losing money dramatically when I because I do this, but i do it anyway. Let's see if that helps. So, here we are. Coming into Kiev. Very first passenger train. He's going to have more than six, isn't he, to pick up. Eleven. You're going to get twelve. Oh, no, you've gone. OK. Right, so we will watch him as he comes back into a Jaxima in a moment. But in the meantime, let's just follow our Fukushima train heading into the main station. Uh, oh, there's the Manila freight train. Uh, oh, you suddenly made money there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how it does that. I've noticed that a few times in the game where it suddenly makes a profit for no apparent reason mid-journey. But I'm, I'm sure there's a good game logic reason for that. That's fine. So watch you come in there. And then what we'll do, I will finish this here and say thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of... Transport Fever 2, the Island Hub series. If you've enjoyed this, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. You know, just click on the old thummy uppy button, that thing below somewhere. If you've got anything to say about what I'm doing with the game, the game itself, or if you feel like naming something within my game here, then please do just drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. Other than that, that train's too long now. I'm going to have to rearrange this. Right, next episode might see a rearrangement of our main passenger hub as well, because that is, yeah, a loading speed of 0 0.80. Slows everything down, don't like that. Yeah, so if you feel like it, saying anything at all, asking for anything, then please do drop it into the comments box below. Other than that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these, or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Transport Fever 2. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.